Hello everyone, we're back with another episode, and today we got a special guest out of Arizona. Her name is Bianca. <laughs> she is the the owner owner of Lotus Theory um, Designs, and she makes custom furniture, which is that awesome piece in the background. <laughs> Say hello, Bianca. Hi, world. <laughs> <laughs> we're also back with um, our ghost, Julie. What as up? a third co-host. <laughs> <laughs> so... I've known Bianca, or known of Bianca, for a number of years. I don't even know how long it's been. It's been a really long time. Um, we kind of met via Facebook, I believe it was, for through the photography. No. no? Oh, you're wrong. I'm wrong. You are incorrect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. MySpace. MySpace. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that doesn't, you know, that's going to help give you a timeline anyway. That, that, that was a while ago. That was like a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, how was your transition from photography into the custom furniture? How, how, how did that happen? Um, well, um, it was easy. And I'll say that it was easy because it was an obvious choice. I was pretty much at the end point of my journey of photography. Um, for about a year, I simultaneously did both the weddings and the furniture. And what started to happen was um, I just, I, I'm only one person mm -hmm. and I give a hundred percent to both businesses. I found that I enjoyed being um, isolated more and at home more. And um, physically, it's a lot easier to do the furniture than it is to, as you well know, as a photographer, get down on the ground and up in trees and take pictures and run here and run there <laughs> doing weddings. And, yep. and um, yeah, just getting older and, 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 you know, not being the young spring chicken. <laughs> <laughs> So do you... I don't have a middle-aged woman to carry around. So with that said, you know, it just, it was kind of a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> so do you find it a little more freeing as an artist to be able to have, you know, when I was doing photography, I always felt like there was a lot of pressure because um, you're dealing with clients, you're dealing mm -hmm. with models, you know, it just felt like a lot of pressure to perform. Do you feel like doing the custom furniture at all makes it a little more freeing? Where you're, where you're able to just go off on your own and, and do your own thing? 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, I toward the end of my photography journey, I started to think maybe I should have just stu uh, stuck with the art side mm -hmm. of it rather than, you know, getting into weddings and family portraits. And that's all good and well. I mean, the money's there. <laughs> um, the creative freedom wasn't. And so, um, you know, in this business, Lotus Siri designs the furniture. One of the things that I told myself and that I really have to stick to is that I'm going to protect this art and not, you know, get to a point where I feel like I'm being, uh, burnt out by restricting my creative side. So I really don't even do customs anymore. I just do what I want. Yeah, that's exactly. awesome. Yeah. That's really cool because I feel like not to interject, but you know, it's my microphone. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> no, but I feel like with photography, you know, you have these clients or customers, whatever you want to call them, and they have certain expectations yes. and they have, you know, this idea of what they want. And if you don't meet that, then it's like, okay, you suck. But with what you're doing, which I can totally appreciate because what you have just those two items that looks phenomenal, you know, you have such a bigger market because you're not doing, doing it for some one it's for you. Right. And if someone happens to come across it, they're like, Oh my God, this is amazing. You have that person that already, that loves it. You know, there right. are no expectations. It's just you being free and doing whatever you want and to hell with whatever anyone else thinks. That's cool. Yeah. And there's a, there's another aspect of it too. I mean, there's, I'm a disgruntled photographer. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie there. Don't sugarcoat anything. <laughs> and I 
absolutely avoided shooting weddings and I, I didn't like shooting like family stuff or anything like that. It was very personal to me mm -hmm. and I lean more towards the art, but I also like shooting with people, but just individual people. So there was a lot of disrespect in, in terms of being a photographer, being an artist. It was seen by painters and whatever else is this you're what you're doing here isn't artwork it's easy and what mm -hmm. you're doing here with the furniture just shuts all of that up <laughs> <laughs> well thank you <laughs> now um, i absolutely understand what you're saying um i you know as a photographer i will never i'll give you an example i will never forget i was trying to pose a bride and a groom mm -hmm. and I was trying to get her to do what I wanted her to do. Just turn this way, stand here. And she's like, you know, we don't want stupid pictures. And that was pretty much when I was like, I got to get out of here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> about to choke a heifer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly. It was just kind of like, why would you hire me if you feel that the, you know, the work I'm going to, the result that I'm going to present to you is stupid <laughs> exactly I, 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 that was like i'm wow. done i'm out <laughs> yeah that was a, that was a, a big fear of mine when it came to shooting weddings is that i always felt like the, you had one shot at this mm -hmm. and i was so concerned that they weren't going to like my vision of what i was taking mm -hmm. that i would ruin that one opportunity for them to get pictures and it wasn't worth any amount of money to me so that yeah. was what pushed me away from that. I was like, cause inevitably my pride's going to get on the line and then I'm going to get sad and all upset. About yeah. it. <laughs> you know, maybe it's just me being a chicken, but I mean, that's really the thoughts that were going through my head. I was like, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was just, you know, your experience with that, that particular couple saying that to you, that would have derailed. That me. would have done me in for sure. <laughs> no, absolutely. I'm, I'm with you. I would never, I do it. Like I do it on a personal level for me mm -hmm. so I can like, put them in the house and anyone that comes into the house, they can, they can see what I do, which is not, you know, it's nothing crazy. Yeah. You know, it's very basic, very simple. Um, but I like it for me cause I'm like, Ooh, I did a really good job. Yeah. Pat myself on the back, you know, <laughs> but I don't put it out there. You know, what you see on, ooh, what you see on Facebook Correct. is that's how basic it is. Yeah. You I mean, know what I mean? I'm I'm a, sim a simple person when it comes to photography. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, like with with the advent of filters and stuff like that through Instagram and everything, and I started to see that popping up in people's photographs, especially, you know, because I came in at the very beginning of the digital scene, and I was one of the very few people that was pushing those really low end DSLR DSLR cameras. Yeah you know, pretty hard and I would get flack for it because they're like, you know, there's grain in it or whatever. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not going to take the shitty pictures of yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then to transition into this digital era where everybody's got, a, you know, a decent camera on their phone and, mm -hmm. you know, then they got all the filters to try to make it look somewhat like the pictures that we bust our ass to do. Mm -hmm. It was like yeah. bad mm -hmm. taste in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit I do. I use my phone a lot. Mm -hmm. I still have my camera. You know, I have a Nikon. It's like a very low end Nikon that I, I toy with every now and again, but I'm like, well now at this point in time, where can I go to get the pictures? Yeah. You know, you know yeah. it might be a little, a minute. Oh, so I you go still got that. a film camera. No, 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 no. Oh, I have okay. the, um, <laughs> no. No, you hush your face. I still use too, girl. <laughs> Look, I would actually, I don't know if you guys have ever done darkroom stuff. That was no. one of my most favorite things in the whole world. Patrick did. And I could sit in a darkroom for hours on end, mm -hmm. dicking off in there, playing around. And, mm -hmm. you know, if I had the means to just throw away money like that, I would. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's... It's a dying, <laughs> dying industry. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> I would love to. I think that'd be kind of cool to check that, check yeah. that out. I know that Patrick's school had some sort of class that you could do something like that, but. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done darkroom stuff, Bianca? I did. And what I remember liking the most was the smell. <laughs> the chemicals. <laughs> You're all sniffing the trays. <laughs> 
squids and gosh, I don't even remember what they're called. It's been so long, but um, yeah, just going in and there was just the ambiance of the, the, the particular lighting because you couldn't expose your film to bright light, obviously. And then as you're, um, you know, exposing your, your print and f- dipping it in the liquid, the, the smell, mm-hmm. you know, I just, I don't know. I remember that so vividly more than any, you know, dodging, burning, uh, using the equipment or anything. Yeah. It just felt, it smelled like accomplishment because you worked hard for those pictures. Well, I don't know if I worked hard, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Uh, one of my photography teachers in, in Oregon, he would, he actually said this. He's like, you know, you, you make me really upset. And he's all, cause you make this look like it's easy. You just fuck off all in class and then you just come out with a good picture and i'm like well because i'm not this is not meant to be stressful mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah i was like i'm doing this because i like to do it mm-hmm. and if it was stressful i wouldn't want to do it mm-hmm. yeah so explain to us all this stuff in your background here <laughs> you've got you you look like an art store back here now i know look at that <laughs> i um I guess we'll start with this. I recently did this and she sold within a couple of hours. I, um, she's getting shipped from here and just outside of Phoenix to Bismarck, North Dakota. And then this is something that I started. Um, I'm trying my hand at canvas painting and, uh, did a live actually on my Facebook page, uh, last week with a phenomenal artist, Carolyn Muncie, that kind of walked me through getting to this point. And I've just been kind of tinkering with it Mm -hmm. since So as far as all the paint, I mean, this is my, my art studio and and this is where all the magic happens. I'm just in my garage, nothing fancy, um, which is wonderful because I'm quarantined, um, (laughs) you know, so really not a whole lot has changed for me, Mm -hmm. um, as far as being at home and working. So, so when, when you take the, you know, Angela can show the, the viewer, some of the pictures and stuff of the pieces that you had, um, when you take these pictures and set up the scene so that you can display it, are you doing it in your garage or doing it in your house? Where are you doing this at? So I no longer have a dining room. That is my staging area. Okay. <laughs> so that's all happening in my dining area um, where I built a staging area using a few pieces of um, uh, sheetrock, putting them together and kind of doing a, a full wall so that I could texture it and not ruin the the wall that's underneath. Oh, that's awesome. That so is it's, awesome. It's, it's a studio. But I them out. Yeah. And then some of my stuff I Photoshop. I don't always Photoshop, but mm-hmm. sometimes I will change a background out. Um, a plus side to having that photography background, right, is that yes. I have an opportunity to put it to use in this business. And because of those photography skills, it is actually um, proved profitable uh, on my end, you know, just whether it be editing people's backgrounds for them, mm-hmm. um, trying to give them a realistic uh, scape with their furniture, or um, maybe doing some product photography for companies and whatnot. So awesome! So it's not just the furniture; you're also able to work with. Uh, I would assume that you have some sort of partnerships with the the art suppliers, as well as networking with other people that are doing this type of furniture. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, I'm part of a vast network, and um, I'm actually a brand ambassador for a couple of companies. One of which is Dixie Bell. So, all of that paint that you see, all of the the shelving, is just lined with Dixie Bell paint. <laughs> okay. Um, and so I'm one of their brand ambassadors. There's nine of us in the in the company. So, wow. and then I'm also a ambassador for Would You Bend, which is these appliques that you see here. Okay. So. So how do those but- attach? Go ahead, Glue. No, 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 that's okay. I'm looking at her paint because you said that you started doing canvas and I just had a quick question. Is that your first yeah. attempt at canvas or is that just something that you're you're showcasing for this or? No, it's my second attempt at canvas. And yeah, I mean, I guess I am kind of showcasing for what we're doing here. And now just to put something in my backdrop. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was there and I'm like, what the heck? That is awesome. That's her two most recent things that she's working on, correct? Yeah, I have a, a chair that I um, is in the other room that I am finishing up today, actually, once we're done here. And I'm calling it hashtag I love the 90s because it's just bursts of color all Ooh, over the thing. I like it already. <laughs> yeah, really. I don't even need to see it. I'll take it. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's really cool. 
So how do you deal with the shipping end of that? Because, you know, for those that have followed me, I, I've tinkered around with many things and I've built some pieces of furniture or repulsored furniture before. And the shipping just seemed like an overwhelming nightmare of a headache. And I was just so paranoid that they would break it. And like, I'm looking at this piece in your background. Right. And I would be horrified if FedEx or UPS busted a leg off of that or something. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, I don't use FedEx or UPS for that reason. They don't care. Okay. Um, they just toss things around, and that's that. Whereas I use white glove shippers. Um, I try to stick to shippers that I have worked with in the past and trust, and I am right there with them as they're loading it into their trailer and wrapping it up real nice using saran wrap and blankets, and, and they take it directly from here to point B, which would be my client's home, and bring it in for them. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not like it's changing trucks and and changing hands and, and people just tossing things around. You know, they they take responsibility for it. And the guys that I work with have a lot of integrity for what they do. You know, not only for what they do, but for what I do too. So, if you don't mind me asking, how did you find a company that that you trusted to do that? I mean, what what com is it? One company that you use or numerous ones? I have a couple, but right now I'm using one because uh, he's, he's just on the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as how I found him, word of mouth, this industry, things get around. We talk, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know and, and we ask each other like, hey, I need a shipper. Um, you know, I, for whatever reason, my shipper's not coming through or I use this guy, I didn't like him, whatever. And um, they're like, hey, well, I've got this guy. Um, you know, they're not big companies. They're just mom and pop shippers, just like I have going on here. Small one man operation. So awesome. Awesome. Is yeah. there any, is there any ever issues where, you know, let's say I were to buy something from you. Is there any issues that maybe these shippers are like, well, that's just, we, that's out of our way. You know, I mean, how, yeah. how does the logistics behind all that work? You just find a different person. You just keep hunting. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's good to know. to go to like New York City, for example. Not, I'm sure all of them right now are like, we're not going there. But you know, I have had them say, you know, it's just not worth it to have to navigate all the tolls and the traffic and congestion with this big trailer, etc. Mm -hmm. You just find somebody else that's willing to do it. Mm, okay. So, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your past because I've never really asked you about this. Um, I know that you have family connection in Buffalo, New York. So, were you born in Buffalo? Boston. You were born in Boston. Boston. Okay. I'm at, but the Boston area is where I'm from. So, explain a little bit about your travels and how you ended up where you're at <laughs> <laughs> and the connection to Buffalo. <laughs> so, I oftentimes will um, uh, compare myself to the Fresh Prince. You know how he went from Philadelphia to what, what was it, uh, Bel Air or Beverly Hills or one of them. And, you know, he went from pretty much this poor living to having money. And that, that's um, often how I will compare myself because I grew up very poor in the projects, hungry. I mean, I remember even living in an abandoned building at one point. And I'm also the oldest of seven, so let's just throw that out there. Wow. Um, I was getting into trouble around the age of 12. Um, and, you know, given my past and, and how I was being raised and the things I had to endure, it's of course I was going to start getting into trouble. You waited and until they, you were my 12? mom sent me out here to live with my aunt and uncle, who at the time had a whole lot of money, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and just showed me love. And I ended up here. <laughs> so you waited until you were 12 to get in trouble? <laughs> I think I started. <laughs> I think I started when I was two. <laughs> right, right. No, I was always a good kid. I think I just, you know, had a bad situation. Oh, so, yeah. So do you ever foresee yourself moving out of Arizona? I flirt with that idea often. Um, obviously, I did move once. I moved up to the Buffalo area. Mm -hmm. um, I was there for a year and a half, decided that was not for me, and came back. Um, yeah, I flirt with the idea. Where would you How? go? In these times, I am glad that I'm here. You know, we don't have quite as many cases as uh, corona cases as some other places. Um, we're more spread out, so it's not like we're right on top of each other like other places. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a lot of the natural disasters going on as far as earthquakes and tornadoes. And, you know, I so, yeah, I would flirt with it, but 
I, right now I feel very safe being here in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> so where, where would you go to if you were to, to move out of Arizona? I don't know. That's a really good question. Um, I love Europe. I mean, if we're reach, if we're dreaming, let's go big, right? All right. I love <laughs> Um, I, I spent some time in Europe about maybe 10, 12 years, probably 12 years ago. Um, man, I remember when I just arrived in France, I was literally walking and singing through the streets. I just felt like I maybe had been some type of like, You're like in a movie. Experience. Yeah. <laughs> like in a past life there. So <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I still haven't gone into Europe and, you know, overseas, but that's definitely was on it's Angela on the list. and I's you know, short list of things to do. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, you know, I've been all over this country, you know, even if it's just driving through, I've been all over this country and I got Same. a pretty, pretty broad perspective on, you know, the way different people behave differently in different areas and just mm -hmm. the whole scene just being totally different. I, I want to <laughs> see what's over there. <laughs> across the yeah, pond. Across the pond. See I want to see, like. Check I want to see, you know, does it rowdy over here? Is it laid back? I mean, what's going on here? <laughs> it's probably all the same, just in a different language. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> it's like when, when I first visited New York City, our friends that were showing us around, I was like, look, I want to go right into the ghetto. <laughs> yeah. I was like, let's not, let's not sugarcoat anything. No. Let me see. Let me see the worst of Go this. Balls deep. <laughs> I want Might to see as well. the shit that's in the movies. Oh my god! Take me to the hood. Uh uh. I would have done a tuck and roll. Keep going. Uh uh. You're on your own. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Jeez. So, when you started doing the the furniture stuff, um. How did you discover the the groups and things that you're you're networking with? Is it are they like Facebook groups? I mean, what? How how did that pro? How did you get to that point? Oh, gosh, oh, you're taking me back. I have to try to remember. I'm pretty sure it was just word of mouth. Like, hey, join this group. Hey, I've got this resource. Um, started off here locally. Eventually, started finding groups as the industry industry grew and I grew. Mm -hmm. um, more and more groups were emerging, you know, uh, pertaining to the craft. And, um, I actually run a group now more like a ghost at this point. I'm so busy in other, in other areas that, um, we have a nice set of admin women in place to help run that group. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just word of mouth though. I really think I just, it, just like anything, right? Like when you refer a business and whatnot, you know, people talk. It seems like, I mean, from an outside perspective, it seems like the, the networking that goes on in, in that group is more friendly compared to the stuff like, you know, <laughs> I do my welding and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really shitty. I mean, these guys will, you'll post a picture of some of your work and they will rip you apart. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> this is dangerous. And, you know, and the ph photography stuff was really catty, you know, I found it as well. But it seems like just from watching what you're doing from a distance, it seems like it's more it's more friendly. Am I wrong there or I right? Mean, I think if it seems that way, good. We're doing a good job of masking <laughs> the cat, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But I've had my I've had my ass ripped apart too, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, I just like whoa, you know. It, especially when I was a newbie, man, I took that stuff to heart. I just wanted to go hide and quit and never, you know, just kind of do one of these and, and never see me again. So now I just I'm like whatever. <laughs> yeah, Conf confidence has grown enough. <laughs> yeah, As, thank goodness because man, the, I just. In any industry, there are some nasty, nasty people out there. Trolls that have no other function but to stir things up on the internet. I think so. that's my biggest weakness with, with the social media aspect of anything as an artist is that I, you know, I'm learning to just try to ignore some of it. Mm -hmm. But I fight back. <laughs> it's in my blood to fight back. <laughs> It's just, a, it's a knee jerk reaction. Yeah. And then you think about it sometimes and you're so, like, eh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't. Well, I already did. Yeah. Whatever. 
<laughs> Might as well I deal with it. I always fight back, but um, there have been a few where I've spoken up just because, you know what? Like, <laughs> I'm going to make an example of you publicly. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes. <laughs> you know? I told you, like, I mean, I, I have a normal middle class, whatever middle class is now, but normal middle class life now, but I am a hood girl at heart. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't get me going, you know? <laughs> Pop the nails off, take the weave out. <laughs> Shit's popping. My hair. <laughs> <laughs> when she starts tying her hair up, you better just spread. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Things are getting wild here. <laughs> Be like, um, I don't know if you guys notice this, but somebody's getting ready to fight. <laughs> Start recording after the other person hits. Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny is that oftentimes I think what people need to remember when people are being nasty on the internet, these people are not going to say these things to your face. No, they won't. Right? They won't. Not. They feel anonymous. They feel safe behind a computer screen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're just not going to do that. So, you know, that is something that has helped me anyway to just let things go and kind of do this, which is they wouldn't say that to me. They would not say that. Um, to my face if they walked up to me a six foot woman in public you know <laughs> they just wouldn't do it most, and I think that applies to anybody you know that's most, a good point yeah most people wouldn't do that anyways even if they were you know a smaller person they're just it's it's so easy to just be nasty to somebody on the internet and, it is because you could easily just be like all right I'm done yeah yeah you know I don't have to deal with it because I, right. I mean I've been watching your growth as an artist, artist for so long, and I'm just like thoroughly impressed with with how things have escalated and how you've just evolved. And it's like if I saw somebody saying something nasty about your work, <laughs> I would go after them viciously. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you've got your own pit bull. <laughs> Yes, uh, and I, and I will remember that. <laughs> I do have I do have a, a small entourage of pit bulls, so yeah. I'll just add you to the mix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you made a post um, regarding, you know, the disrespect or not necessarily disrespect, but the value of an artist. Do you want to talk about that for a little bit? <laughs> Sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> sure. Let's 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 get into the good stuff, right? Yeah. Um, well, like I said, I'm brand ambassador for a couple of companies. I was a brand ambassador for the company in that post that I was um, referring to, and <laughs> you know, I and I'm going to try to keep this as 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 correct and as you know, you know what I'm trying to say. The wig is going to um, stay on. <laughs> You know, I just, they have a very different idea as to how an artist should be treated and compensated for the efforts that they put in to help their company grow. And because I did not agree with their um, proposal to me mm -hmm. as far as what, you know, I would get in return for the services a brand, as, a, as an ambassador for them would provide, I didn't agree with it. I walked away and honestly it's been a few days now since I've um, officially done it in a public capacity mm -hmm. um, a few weeks actually and I'm just not looking back I feel free and liberated it's very much like we were talking about earlier about feeling you know with the weddings and and the portraits and feeling like our creativity is just being choked and stifled you know it, it's very similar to that and that's just not how I roll again like I said earlier I made a promise to myself to protect this craft and I know the value in my work. I know the value in the content that I'm putting out there, the value in not only, you know, good paint jobs, um, but also in my photography and my post and in my following is just growing. It's not as huge as I'd like it yet, but it's, it's getting there. Mm -hmm. And so I know the value in all of those things. And I also know the value in myself as a human being and as a woman. And so when a company came, you know, would come to me and I feel that they're really, it's not a fair quid pro quo, um, mutually beneficial relationship. I, you know, I just, I speaking to artists everywhere, you know, you have to assess that and, and ask yourself, is it worth it? You know, can I, can I follow through with this and feel good about what I'm doing, knowing that, you know, I'm not being compensated, 
um, fairly. Yeah. Whether it be monetarily or any other, you know, form of payment. Yeah, that's a, you know, because being on YouTube and having my YouTube activity and stuff like that, inevitably there's companies that come to me and, you know, some of them are as simple as, hey, we're going to send you something. We want to, you know, want you to do a review on it or want you to use it in our videos. You know, some, you know, we're talking about tools in most cases. So some of this stuff is really expensive. You know, right. somebody might send me a $700 saw that I right. really want anyway. And they're like, just use it. And I'm like, okay, fine. That works. We'll just, <laughs> exactly. it's, it's, a, it's a bartering thing, you know, I'm like, send it on over. Sure. <laughs> You I mean, know, if I have to. Yeah. But then there's <laughs> companies that I'll get all the time from China that are like, hey, can you review this or review that? And I'm like, ah, probably not, man. I mean, I don't, number one, I may not need it. I know I can look at it and tell it's bullshit. I'm not mm -hmm. going to lie to people about it. Right. It's like, I mean, we need to start talking money here if we're, if I'm going to be reviewing things that I don't like or, you know, or right. putting forth a bunch of effort into something that just doesn't flow with what I'm doing. Right. So I, I could totally see where, you know, working with any of the companies that you would be affiliated with, where that would be a touch and go type of thing where you, you know, you don't want to burn any bridges, but at the same time, this is art to you. This isn't, this mm -hmm. isn't Kmart. <laughs> well, currently it's my lifeline it's my therapy it's my sanity you yeah. know so even more now than ever i feel the need to protect it I, with everything that's going on outside of these doors in the world right now you know this is what i have and i i just cannot you know allow somebody to tell me what i'm going to do and how i'm going to do it and, and get nothing for it yeah. um you had mentioned about getting you know products from per, per, perhaps china that you're like oh i can already tell that that's not good. Um, you know, I actually have worked for other companies in the past in a, you know, influencer, um, capacity. And there are things that I just, I won't do. I won't use products because I, you know, I, I just don't like the product, you know, and it has nothing to do with them personally. Maybe they're great business people. Maybe they're the best people on the planet, but if you're going to give me a product and ask me to do a review, use it, et cetera. And I find that it's not, you know, it's subpar. It's not as good as it needs to be. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell my followers, this is great. You should buy it. Yeah. I'm not doing that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Check out these brushes. They're wonderful. And they're yeah. dropping hairs all over everything. <laughs> but Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it's so funny. I worked in the restaurant industry years ago, and it would be the same thing, you know? People would say, how's the breaded fish, for example? And I'd be like, ooh, no, uh-uh, you don't <laughs> want that. <Yeah. laughs> well, if you don't, you kind of, you lose your credibility. Yeah. You know, and then people aren't going to trust in your judgment and anything you're doing, so it just puts a bad taste in your mouth. Well, and Absolutely. I don't, <laughs> no I don't. <laughs> True. <laughs> I don't think these companies realize how valuable that is. I mean... Yeah. It doesn't matter if you've got 5,000 followers or 100,000 followers. Mm -hmm. Those people are there because they trust you. Right. And, you know, I got into a kind of a thing with all my rebranding on my YouTube channel and, and doing this podcast and stuff. And I was like, I was trying to explain it to somebody. I was like, you have to understand that I'm selling me. The product is me. It's not my welding. Mm -hmm. It's not the podcast. It's me. It's anything that I get involved in. That's the product. <clears throat> and that integrity and my artistic creativity is what I'm delivering and it has to stay pure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you anymore. Absolutely. There's a lot of people out there, you know, and to each their own, by no means am I trying to bash, but you know, I know for what I do compared to some of the work that, you know, for example, locally is being thrown around. I have people say, your stuff is so expensive. I can go down here and get it for, you know, $300 cheaper. And it's like, well, go down there and get it. For right. Cheaper. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, then, let me help you. You know, it's it, my talent is based on, or my prices are based. There's a saying, uh, my prices are based on my talent and not your budget, you know? Well, and people are literally just throwing paint on something and selling it for like dirt cheap. Well, you know, then they come to me. I've literally had come, people come to me six months later, the paint peeled off. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I'm sorry. That's really sad, but. Well, and that, I mean, the, when we're getting into the value of what it is that you do, there are regular people that don't have never put their effort into doing like a furniture piece, like what's behind you. 
they have no idea of the amount of work that's involved in that. You know, okay. I've never refinished a piece of furniture like you do, but I've done enough playing around with woodworking and furniture and stuff like that to know that there's hours upon hours and, mm -hmm. you know, and a tremendous amount of material that has to be purchased and tools right. and, you know, that stuff is not free. It doesn't, it's not something no. that, <laughs> you know, when you're, when you're looking at trying to sell a piece of furniture and you can't compare it to an Ikea <laughs> piece of furniture. It doesn't no. matter if it's used and refinished. There's just way too much effort and work put into it. Right, right. Absolutely. There's a lot of work that goes into it. But I think that for the most part, some people like yourself, you know, may not go through all this or have done anything quite this elaborate. But I think most people understand that there is, um, at the very least, just prep. I mean, it, it, you know, I'm not the first person to paint furniture. People have been yeah. painting furniture for what, a hundred years, maybe more. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's dawn of time, I'll say. <laughs> um, anyway, you know, and so even back in the day, you know, they would sand it, strip it, sand it, prep it, prime it, whatever. You know, I think most people for the most part have a very basic understanding that you don't just walk up to something and throw paint on it. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you, I have a question for you. So how do you compare like your first piece to where you are now? There um, we go. That's the one. I, Let me I see. Like you. That's a good question. That, it was a hot <laughs> mess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a hot mess. Oh my gosh. And, and it just, oh my gosh. I don't even know what to say. I thought it was awesome at the time. I was so yeah. proud and I still am. Yes. That hot mess was the foundation for my growth. Yes. You have to, you have to appreciate that. And you have to see, like, I think it'd be really cool to see like how far you've come, like different uh -huh. pieces and stages. And you're like, this is okay. Now it doesn't look as bad. Yeah. <laughs> now we're here. Oh, yes. Every once in a while, like on a throwback Thursday or something, I'll throw an old piece out there. Look what I did, you know, yeah. four years ago. And I thought it was great. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> It's good to look look back at some of that stuff. But I mean, even like when I look at my old photography, some of the stuff that I thought was complete trash back then, I have a different view of it. Yes. You know, yeah, and there yeah, may be a, there may have been pieces that you were working on where you you really struggled with a certain spot and you're like, and, you know, five years later you look at it and you're like, that actually looks really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. I have to say, your photography back in the day, I looked up to you so much as a new photographer on the scene, you know, and just, I'll never forget, you had a picture, and I think it was one of the radio personalities here in Phoenix, and she's wearing a fur hood, I think. Oh, Lady and Law. She, yes, that's exactly who it was, and she's up against a, uh, like, a glass in her reflection. Oh, man, it was just so mood, the mood. It was beautiful. Thank I remember you. that. We were in uh, downtown Phoenix at night when we were doing that shoot with that her. Was. It was, it was, that was a beautiful picture. I'll never forget that. I'd and love I to think see that. that was one of the ones that caught my eye. Yeah, I was, I was so nervous when I would do shoots. <laughs> Because like if it was if I was going off with Angela or somebody, it's no no nerves at all. She knows right. who I am. She knows mm -hmm. the process of me just stumbling around trying to find something. I know how weird it's gonna get. Yeah, I know how <laughs> weird it's gonna get. I may ask her to do something that most people are like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> right. I had that that one picture of it's a model named Stephanie that she climbed into a, a water. I don't, you probably don't know the process, but it's her in the water. Her eyes are kind of bluish gray and the water's like surrounding her face. I asked her to get into an irrigation canal. I remember that picture. Yeah. I asked oh, her to get into okay, an I'm irrigation canal that. in South Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> it was like we were shooting in this old abandoned house out there and we were done. And... I had, when I sat down and had a meeting with her prior to the shoot to try to tell her where I wanted to try to go with this, I had mentioned a water picture. And it just so happens as we were driving out, that irrigation canal was flowing. And I, and I was pulling out of the driveway before and I stopped and I looked at it and I was like, yeah, wait a minute. I was like, she's not going to do it, but I'm going to have to ask. <laughs> you never know until you ask. I was like, it's right there. I see it. <laughs> And she, she, she went for it. it. Yeah. 
she went for it. But I always get super nervous about stuff like that because I'm, I'm like, if it was me, I'd just dive right into that thing. No problem. Whatever. Mm-hmm. There's a shower later. <laughs> Well, good for you for asking because I mean I, I remember that picture too. That picture was just so goth, yeah. kind of dark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like at that time in my life, I mean, we're talking what early twenties. That was a while ago. Now I remember just relating to that because I was kind of emo and dark myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a I need some therapy, lock me up way, but just in a trying to figure stuff out kind of way. You everyone, know? everyone had that phase at some point. Or some yeah, of the, you yeah. know what I'm talking about, exactly. And some of us are still there. <laughs> yeah. You might slip in and out of so, it yeah. every every now and again. It's cool. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's I've, fine. I've always had a, I don't know, maybe I'm just weird, but I've always had a sweet spot for art like that. And yeah. Even yeah. even still today, if I, if I got back into photography, mm-hmm. it's really hard for me to do. But if I did, I would be right back into that genre, that path. And mm-hmm. it just, it's personal i guess it just seems a lot more personal to me mm-hmm. i always say that's my favorite furniture style just kind of the dark edgy almost my friend says like it belongs in a vampire layer yeah yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the problem is, is that there's not a huge market for that mm-hmm. um you know and I, I i'm very versatile i do all kinds of stuff but my favorite is anything that's just super I don't know, masculine, industrial, yet has like a feminine uh, mystique to it at the same time. Yeah. That's Kinda why, that's why yeah. you like the, the lavenders and purples. What about the lavenders and purples? That's why you like using those colors. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Because I, I lean towards those colors too, and it's because of that same thing. It's like trying to yeah. trying to make something that's dark and masculine a little bit more feminine. So yeah, it's, okay. it's lighter. Uh, I can see that. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah, because it it still has that. Like, if you're just looking at the piece behind you, it has a very, you know, a very big contrast difference. And mm-hmm. typically, stuff that's more feminine is is very flat, as far yeah. as um, flat and flat. bright. Mm-hmm. Where much stuff that's more contrasty is is definitely leans towards masculinity. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, that's my opinion. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're wrong. But I'm just. Kidding. <laughs> just nod uh-huh yeah anyway uh-huh. sure fuck off <laughs> anyway this is over here just lie to our faces uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> what's the biggest piece you've ever done uh size wise yeah um hey girl where you been <laughs> <laughs> What's your I'm over here. Who's talking? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm trying to remember. I feel like it probably was an on wall. Oh gosh, gosh, I can't remember. Probably an on wall of sorts. Okay. I know that there was one that I never posted, but that I had done and kind of. I, I tend to sometimes I'll start a project and I'll just say I'm done. <laughs> I'll lose interest, <laughs> divorce it, and um, this thing stood. <laughs> About, I'm going to say eight feet tall. Oh, wow. Yeah. Actually, there is another amois that I did for a client that reminded me, and that thing probably stood nine feet tall. I could not believe. I actually had to hire movers to help bring it to her once I was finished because I just, I couldn't. <laughs> it was wow. too big. Now, but, have you only done furniture? Like, have you ever done, like, murals or anything like that? No murals. No? Just Sure. Just branching out into canvas, maybe the core and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, uh, uh, so Patrick's mother, she, mm-hmm. she's an artist as well. Um, she actually did the, is it the central square library? Yeah. There's like a huge mural, mural on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Had a slow moment. I apologize. <laughs> so, if you could cut. spell it out for me, I could probably say it better. Yeah. It's, the, uh, it's the country <laughs> accent, the mural. <laughs> <laughs> she painted a wall <laughs> in the library and it's actually it's pretty cool but they she's gotten um like different different uh projects throughout like west monroe i don't know if you're familiar um like if you had uh east on 49 yeah there's the small post office on the right hand side mm-hmm. there's like a big cow is that's that, painted that's brown. Worse. Like, where's the beef? She, she did that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. 
Shout out to the cow. That's my story. <laughs> I've always, you know, as far as like painting and stuff like that, and like, like I'm, I'm looking at that piece of furniture that you did, and, and I don't know what it looked like originally, but I can tell what you've added to it. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I'm always, that's where I struggle is to create that image in my head. Mm-hmm. As a mm-hmm. photographer, it was kind of easy for me because I would just see it. You know, yeah. like I said, with that water picture, I just knew that picture was there. Right. But to just start with a piece of furniture, mm-hmm. I'm like always digging through, you know, other people's photographs of their works and picking and choosing elements that I like about it and then try to, you know, treat it like a collage. So when I look at the stuff that you do, I'm like, God damn, that looks good. <laughs> I'm like, why can't I do that? <laughs> I don't always go in with a mission either. I didn't actually, this was a mishap. So it started off as something totally different and I didn't like where it went. And so I pretty much started new, um, stripped the drawer fronts, which is what I didn't like about it, stripped them down and um, added these things to it with glue. I know you asked me earlier, (laughs) glue and heat. (laughs) Um, And it just kind of evolved as I worked on it. I don't always go in with a vision. I will literally just sit down in front of a piece of furniture sometimes and just, I don't know. Just, just like have a spiritual at it. experience. See what happens. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, it reminds me of Bob Ross when he would make mistakes and just, just They're whatever. Happy mistakes. It's, it's there. Yeah, yeah happy, happy mistakes. mistakes. I can't do that. Mistakes. I can't do that. I'm so fucking anal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm if there was like a little blotch of color somewhere where it's not supposed uh, to be, I would yeah. freak the fuck out. <laughs> I have literally had to stop. In the beginning, I was very much so like that. This here is is very much so like that because I see the imperfections and I'm really bothered by them. You know, <laughs> yeah, really bothered by them. But you know, I, I'm trying. It's it's taken me a while to get back to it because of that, but I'm not going to give up. Well, from over here, it looks like it's great. Yeah, no, it looks really awesome. I oh, like thank that. You. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, I, I do know what you're talking about because I nitpick the shit out of everything. I mean, when uh-huh. I go out in the public, I'll just looking at a piece of furniture, table, or yeah. something, and I just start tearing it apart in my head mentally. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Picking, I'm like, how did they make that? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> if, even to the point where we were inside one of the grocery stores, and there was some tables at the Starbucks in there, and I'm underneath the table taking pictures of it. Oh my god, <laughs> can't take you anywhere. <laughs> God, I'm going to send you a self-help book. Yeah. <laughs> so that's on the way. Yeah. Well, like, when we went to the Corning Museum of Glass, Angela's walking around the gift store and I'm like, there ain't nothing in here I want to buy. But I'm over here looking at the way the building was built. Oh, for the love of God. Taking pictures of certain parts of their I-beam structure and stuff like that. Because I'm like, that looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's your your inspiration for something down the road. Something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. You know, I'll just I'll store those things away on my computer until I find something that needs to be industrial. <laughs> Makes sense. So, have you thought about making your own furniture? Yeah. What's stopping you? Skill, time, I, caring. I think you have the skill, there, <laughs> Missy. <laughs> Tools. You know, um, I'm slowly building my tools, kind of like, you know, as a photographer, I slowly built up my equipment. Same mm-hmm. thing with my tools. Um, just skill, you know, it's 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 a lot of math and, <laughs> you know, knowing what you're doing and, and even, you know, just knowing how to work tools. And I mean, I, I do build some small things, decor type things. Like I built a spice rack in my house. Mm-hmm. That's safe. But to actually have to, you know, draw out and create architecture for like a dresser maybe one day you should dive into it head first yeah i think you would i think you would do well just get in there yeah all in there okay you got to start somewhere (laughs) no serious i mean i I think your skill level knowing what's involved with what it is that you do i mean the rough the rough work part that's easy anybody anybody can rough out something and you have all the finishing detail there and that's the hard part. That's the hardest part. You know, I, I've seen cabinet makers and stuff make some really sturdy pieces of, you know, furniture. But I'm like, that looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'll build a dresser and it's like doing this. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Not 
not knowing what I'm doing, you know. But hey, maybe you're right. Maybe I'll just dive in. Maybe I'll build a little desktop two drawer situation. There you go. Yeah. A little end table. Yeah, a little something yeah. small. And then you're gonna get hooked. Yep. <laughs> this is where it starts, right here. Yeah. <laughs> so have you redone your kitchen and had all fancy cabinets and stuff like that? Oh no. 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 They're still looking like they came out of the nineties. Yes. Hashtag I love the nineties again. There's that hashtag again. <laughs> See, Angela gets mad at me because I'm so stubborn about stuff like that. We need to remodel our house room by room. But I'm like, I have to make the kitchen cabinets. He wants to make everything. I was like, I have to make the kitchen cabinets. Mm. They have to be personal to me. And it takes <laughs> that much longer. Yeah. I know from experience. Yeah. I'm still missing one cabinet because we, Patrick, made them. And he got just enough for what we had. Mm -hmm. And he messed up the either the first or last one. He got so frustrated because he used that, um, not wicker, but it's like on the back of those old rocking chairs. It's like that weaved. Oh, the caning? The cane, yes. Yeah. So you, you have to soak it in water, stretch it out, whatever. And then he messed it up. <laughs> so I am without a cabinet. Like a, a door on one of my cabinets. And I'm, every time I look at it, I'm like, I can see every single thing in this cabinet. Because he got so it. frustrated that he broke it. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Angela's frustration with me. Because I'm like, nope, it has to be right. I'm not even going to do it unless it's the way I want it. <laughs> and that's why we still don't have our That's why it's not table. done. <laughs> well, <laughs> we had went to... Gideon's, it's a secondhand furniture store, and we had bought a dresser that we turned into a media cabinet for our TV and stuff, and then we bought the other pieces to go with it, you know, the headboard, mirror, because we were going to turn those into a coffee table, side table, etc. We don't have those pieces yet. They're still sitting in the dining room. You need to mind your business. Oh. Hey, you are my business, <laughs> mister. I'm pretty sure this actually is her business. <laughs> <laughs> so the media cabinet is done looks very nice but that's as far as we got <laughs> yeah we have a wall too don't forget about that oh a wall <laughs> you should you know what angela if you want to come over to my house just you just for just a walk through you'll really appreciate what you have <laughs> like doors on your bedroom Door. um you're not sharing your room with a toddler <laughs> Etc. I do appreciate that the front door got done and it's a very pretty orange, so I appreciate well, that. Well, it's technically not done either, but whatever. It's painted, so that's all I care about. <laughs> the trim work's not done. <laughs> it's not going to be orange, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I have a lot of projects that need to be finished. <laughs> the, the honey, the honey do list. The honey do list. Yes, yes. the ever growing. <laughs> Honey-do list? Well, they're not really honey-do list because I don't let her boss me around. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not like, honey-do this. I'm just like, it, if can it's we on buy a, it? Yeah, it's, if it's on a list. She's not bossing you. They're I, just tasks that... It's things that, that I'm get, like, I've got to do this. And then she's like, can you hurry it up? Yeah. <laughs> can we just go buy that? And I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> I hear you. So, <laughs> all of your... Let's change subjects because uh -huh. I'm being bullied here. Mm. <laughs> Do you feel outnumbered? Like you are surrounded. The estrogen. Yeah, the estrogen. My towel. It's just, yeah. <laughs> look, it's better than a bunch of wieners, so I'm just going to say that. Speaking of, <laughs> did you do the soy sauce? No, I did Damn not. <laughs> Do you know what she's referring to? No. Are you talking? I'm yes. going with no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know where my mind went, and I'm like, I don't know that I want to know. <laughs> you probably don't want to know. Fine. Yeah, you'll have to go listen to like that. Like the last five minutes of the last episode. Yeah. Yeah. That's, okay, I'll, I'll check that out. <laughs> when we derailed. Yeah, when we derailed. There's actually a clip about it on the 62 podcast page. <laughs> so you yeah. get straight to the, the horrible content. Yeah. No, that is that is gold. <laughs> Pure gold coming from my mouth. <laughs> Ter terrible ideas that I know somebody's going to do. <laughs> no one will own up to it. Yeah, I'm waiting won't... on you. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
when you first started doing this, obviously you didn't have all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at that and I'm like, I've been doing my type of welding and fabricating, whatever crap I do forever, and I still don't have my shit together like you do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I've got to paint something, I'm digging around looking for a dirty brush that's been in a dumpster or something. <laughs> I'm like, you're very organized, and it looks like you got extras of everything. I love it. Like, this makes my heart warm just seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't always like that. <laughs> it was not always like that. Um, Actually, I organized it again once we went into the whole, you know, stay home, don't leave your home thing. I, well, I guess I'm organizing the garage again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there was a time where I was digging for stuff. There was a time where I just did this out of my kitchen. And I had one little shelf on the wall with a few items on it. Yeah, well... Our, our dining room looks like a bomb went off in it. <laughs> it's kind of a homeless shelter for yeah. miscellaneous items. <laughs> Not the homeless shelter. <laughs> we've, we've still got stuff in boxes from when we moved here two years ago. And then I had a coworker of mine had me reupholster some cushions for his, his dining room set. So I've got, you know, remnants of foam <laughs> and the dining room table and remnants of the fabric still here and there, staple guns, staplers. We have, I'm, now, I'm, I'm not a one-upper, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> when, we have, when you have a collection of empty spray paint cans <laughs> for no reason. What are you guys spray painting in your house? I can't tell you the last thing we spray painted. That's what I'm getting at. Oh. <laughs> It's been years. Go on. So, so speaking of spray paint. So when I was building this studio and I decided to do this little wall thing here, I got the bright idea of spray painting that in the middle of the night. <laughs> so <laughs> in the house. Yeah. You did house. it in the house. Yeah. Look. This room that we're in is upstairs above our kitchen, and there's a set of staircase. There's a staircase that comes up the stairs from the kitchen, and it only leads to this room. And our room is all the way across the house, another set of staircase, all the way up, not attached at all. <laughs> so I'm like, it's not that big. This will be just, fine. I'll just spray it real quick, close the door, and then go to bed. You almost oh. died. <laughs> no. It was... It was so bad. She probably slept so good because she was high. Oh, no. It was terrifying. <laughs> Couldn't even breathe. I, I was in bed, too, and I was like, we're going to fucking die. <laughs> I was like, we're going to go to sleep, and we're not going to wake up. This is it. <laughs> it's like a Romeo and Juliet type yeah, of thing. Yeah, just poison oh. each other. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that's probably the reason why I'm not so concerned about the coronavirus. <laughs> Because yeah. <laughs> I do stuff like that. <laughs> Be like, yeah, I think I got this whole killing myself thing under control. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, so, we have MREs on our dining room table yeah, for we some do. reason. We do. You do? I we do. do. Where'd you get them from? I can't tell you. Okay. <laughs> it's illegal. Okay. <laughs> I Moving do, on. I, I have a, a friend. Supplier. I have a friend that had some connections and he, okay. he sold them to me yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think my dad still has his does he from when he retired yeah how long ago was that we moved here in 93 are they supposed to last that long i think I they have are no idea so they're vintage oh MRIs. these are yeah oh these are old <laughs> yeah i was watching videos on youtube of of people test tasting those things. Oh man, I remember <laughs> I was, eating them. I was down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Just, I'm wa why? Like I've got nothing better to do than to watch some asshole on YouTube eating MREs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean the stuff that's out there, and you're yeah. like, yes, this is intriguing. Let me watch this for the next hour. Yeah. So, yeah. do you have anything that you want to bring up or talk about? Oh, um. <laughs> No pressure. I, no pressure. No, I know. I know. I'm like, my gosh. 
You know, if you caught me like five years ago, <laughs> I would be better at this because I feel like, you know, that's like job interview material right there. You got to be quick. Do you have um, any questions for us? Yeah. Do you have any questions yeah, for that's us? That's normally what I would do in a job interview, right? Is yeah. I would be like, well, tell me about your company. What yeah. do you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, just in terms of like anything that you want people to like check out as far as your work and. Oh, yes. Well, they can do that. That would be lovely. That would be absolutely fabulous. Um, but yeah, they can go on my website, www.lotustheorydesigns.com. Uh, <laughs> book. I have a YouTube channel. Go see my work. I have blogs. I have some tutorials. Um, not on this, unfortunately. That was that was just for me in a, in a time of just needing to escape into... Aladdin. I feel like this reminds me of Aladdin. Like, I feel like it flew in on a magic carpet. Really? Yeah. I'm like, getting like that. The whole time I'm doing it, I'm going, a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> it's funny. I actually, I watched that yesterday. Yeah. I watched the movie yesterday. But I'm getting like that, what is that? Ste is it steampunk or whatever? That that whole vibe from it? That's you know? the masculine part that you're noticing. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the coloring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I said that as I pay attention to the colors that you're choosing on your work, mm -hmm. uh, just some stupid thing that I do. And I'm like, I know why she's using that. Okay. I don't know if she knows why she's using that. But yeah. I know why. I like it. <laughs> well, after that, I'll check in with you. Hey, why am I doing what I'm doing? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I can't figure it out. Yeah, I can't figure it out. I'm weird like that. I just like, I try to make sense of people's styles. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe it's from the photography stuff, but there was like always certain people that I just always watched and I would just like study what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So, I, like I don't it. know. I, 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 study cool. your, I study your color choice. <laughs> <laughs> so then let me ask you. Do you find that by studying people's work and what they're doing that you get some insight into their psyche? Mm, possibly. I mean, it's, it's obviously if I have any, it's super broad. It's not like I'm a, I can't tear somebody's whole existence apart by a piece of furniture. <laughs> by this beautiful dresser? <laughs> yeah. I could, I could just tell, I can tell to a certain degree, like if I looked at somebody's artwork, whether for George or somebody else's, I have a pretty good idea of the gamut of things that would really set them off if they saw somebody else's artwork, they'd be like, Oh my God, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And right. you, you could just tell what visually, what they're visually attracted to. Sure. And I can also tell that when they do something out of their norm, that may look, it may look good to other people, but I can tell that when they're uncomfortable with it. Yeah. yeah. I've had a few of those myself where I was uncomfortable with it. Yeah, where the, where you know everybody else is like that looks good, but you could just tell in the work that mm -hmm. that you struggled putting it out there. Yeah, because it's it's out of your norm, it's out of your comfort sure. zone. So what's what's your most favorite piece that you've done? Well, right now this one. Yeah. Yeah. This this, <laughs> um, this one's awesome. No, actually, I I don't think that you guys showed it, but there's a purple one, and I used these moldings to create like a wing spread going across it that was probably one of my favorites it's like the first one that comes to my hmm. my brain i'll yeah. check it out and yeah. it was just kind of emo a little dark um the wings that i created using a whole bunch of these were kind of dripping you hmm. know so that's cool so how do people go about buying your your work my website is it i mean I, my social media is is great for getting leads and, and people will, you know, eventually end up on my website from social media and YouTube and whatnot. Um, and Etsy, but, uh, mostly on my website. Do you allow customers to get into a bidding war? No, it just is what it is. I don't, I don't want the drama. First come, Whoever first gets it, gets it, you know, yeah. I so, thought about doing that like an auction, maybe as like a fundraiser or something, but just <clears throat> the drama. <laughs> I like things clean, you yeah. know. I'd <laughs> be like, you got here first, it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever had a customer try to to do that where they're like, I know you still have it. I'll give you more. No. No. Mm. 
No, that hasn't happened to me yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, wait a minute. How come you guys are not doing that? <laughs> I've had them try to talk me down, but not up. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm a weirdo, but when there's certain things, I know that that's the only one. Yeah. I I would do that. You're going to up the ante? I would up the ante. I'd yeah. be like, no, that's mine, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that is not yours. I don't care if you got here first. <laughs> Have you um, ever... I've done it. You've done it? Happened to me. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Have you oh. ever done... Um, I'm trying to think of how to word it. Like one item have you ever duplicated anything or they're oh, all individual that's a good question unique. i have and i don't like to do it yeah. i think i did it um i had a piece that i did and it was also purple purple's my favorite color by the way hmm. and um this woman in texas loved it so much that she wanted me to recreate it and and i did and i just felt like something was stolen from me when i was done so at this point it's kind of like get it while you can i don't really want to have to recreate it because yeah. it's not it's not fun once i'm done i'm done I'm you got it out of out of your system it's done exactly okay. you know it's done it's in the past nice yeah nice so have you has anybody ever bought a piece from you where they're like i would really like you to give me additional pieces that flow with it so they had like a complete set yes I actually have um, a woman that bought a dresser in Florida. Um, same thing. She, you know, that you're asking me, she bought a dresser and wants me to do some end tables to match it. Um, however, they won't be exact. So it's a lot easier for me to do something that, as you said, flows rather than, you know, doing the same design on each piece. Yeah. Has anyone... That... Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. No, that's boring. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> has anyone ever come to you with like a with a piece of blank furniture or just plain furniture and they're like i have this idea can you create it or is it just you present what you have no they have so back when i did customs they would do that um unfortunately you know i have many superpowers but you know reading minds is not one of them and so in my contract i would try to um, you know, lay out what it is that they're asking as best they can, mm -hmm. have them sign it in the contract. It would say, you know, it's based on artist interpretation. Yeah. And, um, you know, I would try, I, one of the last customs that I did, this is when I was like, I am done with customs. I had a lady and she asked me to do a table for her and I followed it to a T, um, the, the outline that she gave me in the contract. She picks it up. I love it. Pays me, takes it home. But a week later, it doesn't match my house. And long story short, she demanded that I repaint it. And I'm like, no. And then she demanded that I help her sell it. And I'm like, no. Wow. And there's some backstory to it. She was getting a little nutty, a little fatal attraction on me in the meantime. Mm. And um, anyway, and uh, I said, you know what? I'll just refund half your money just to pretty much be done with it. You just know, to shut her up. Yeah. yeah. You know, cut your losses. I don't even care. And, um, she said, no, she wants me to do this, this, and this. And I said, you know, I just let her go. I was like, whatever comes back about a week later, I think onto my social media accounts talking about, she's going to send her husband to my house. I owe her money. I mean, it just got so crazy. I could not believe this woman and this situation. Wow. And so I was like, I'm done. I mean, these people are nuts, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not them, um, but there are some nutty ones out there. It was enough. For me to be like, I am done with custom work. Yeah. You know, I'll just do what I do and you guys can buy it. And if you don't like it, then don't, you know? Right. Take it or leave it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, you know, I've said it before with Julie when I was talking about, you know, any of the work I do, I just don't want to deal with the customers. Huh? Mm -hmm. it, it's got to be, I have, I can't ruin it by the customers because they will make something that you love. They'll make you hate it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's why I don't do photography anymore. Cause I, I actually really, really enjoyed it. But if I pick up my camera right now today and say, I'm going to go shoot something, I just have like this overwhelming, like anxiety that's inside of me saying, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, don't do this. This is just going to bring back all that bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's i mean that's why i i avoid the customers because of that and yeah. 
and you know, like you were saying, I had a customer that I was redoing a Jeep, uh, his Jeep frame on, and it turned into a big shit show. I mean, where he came over to my shop with his dad, and I thought he, you know, thinking that they were going to intimidate me, and I'm like, uh, no. Wow. <laughs> you know, and, and it was just it's like... that. They just came to bully you. I mean, that's what she was saying. She's going to send her husband to my house. Let me tell you, Arizona's a right to carry state. Don't come to my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and we'll leave it at that. I'm know? like, please, please don't make me go down that path because I try my best to not behave that way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I really am a civil person, but please don't push me that way. Yeah. Like, not many people see this. Like, I will turn into a hood rat if I need to. Yeah. We don't need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what ended up happening with that when you um, came? I ended up basically having to pull his dad aside and I was like, look, I don't know what your son told you, but you guys are not going to come in here and steamroll me. It's just not going to happen. I was like, I'm trying to be reasonable about the entire situation. You're going to pay me for the work I did. And if at this point, I don't want nothing to do with any of it. So pay me up to now and take your shit, get it out of here. (laughs) And he did because he realized I wasn't going to budge on it and, they're not going to go in there and beat me up. That's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so it's just like, I don't know. That's after going from the photography and then trying to do that, I was immediately like, no, nope, we're not doing this again. <laughs> I got to take control of this. I got to, I have to control all of it yeah. and keep people from ruining it. You know? Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. You got to protect it. Otherwise you'll get burned down. Yeah. Kind of like um, psychologists or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever thought about doing a piano? I did do a piano. That's a good question. I did my piano. Oh. Cool. Yeah, I did it in purple. <laughs> <laughs> so Angela's got some ideas in her head that are going to get really expensive to ship. <laughs> That's okay. We can um, save. We can save. <laughs> hey, acquiring the piano is the cheap part because they have actually have a website called like Piano Adoption. So when people are trying to get rid of pianos, there's a website where they do it for free. That's really cool. Yeah. They're, they're actually, buying used pianos is really, really affordable because they're so hard to move. Yeah. I mean, those things are thousands of pounds and mm-hmm. people, nobody wants to touch them. Yeah. So they're just like, just take it. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. That's why we had to leave That's mine. I, I got mine. I got it out of um, this guy. They just gave it to me. And um, they're like, just come get it. And I get there and it's in a trailer. So, you know, if you know anything about like trailers, the, the, the stairwell is like really narrow and leads in. And oh my gosh, what a nightmare. Meanwhile, the guy's on his hospice bed while we're trying to move this piano out. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh. I mean, it was really, truly a gift, and he, they were so appreciative that it was going to somebody that would, you know, use it and, and love on it. But, oh, my goodness gracious, it was a nightmare. So then the next time I moved, I hired somebody to move the piano. I just, there was no way. No way. <laughs> I bought her one when we were back in Arizona, and, and we moved it home. But it wasn't too bad because the house you know, where we got it from was a bigger house out in Glendale. And, you know, it was right by the front door. So it was kind of a straight shot out the door into the trailer. Mm-hmm. And then going into our house was kind of a straight shot into the house. But that was still, I mean, that thing was crazy heavy. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can mess up the, the, the keys and the whatever the stuff's called inside the guts, you Bang. know, by not, you know, and banging it. And yeah. 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 I'm like, I'll just throw some money at the issue. Come get this piano, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when we moved, I was like, no, we're getting rid of this because we'll just find another one in New York. I'm not moving this to New York. <laughs> so that's what eventually the dining room is going to become, just the house for the future piano. Yeah. Oh, the piano room. Mm-hmm. Piano room. Nice. We don't eat in the dining room anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to keep you too much longer, Bianca. I really appreciate you you doing this podcast with us. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. You're some some good people. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll put the, you know, in the links to the video. I'll put links to where you can find all her work, and you got your contact information. I'm assuming on your website and your Facebook page. So if you guys are 
wanting to buy something or outbid somebody <laughs> on that awesome piece of furniture <laughs> that's sitting behind her, <laughs> you better act fast. Yeah. <laughs> And give her her first bidding war. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or you can buy her, well, I'm assuming this would be your first sale on an art piece, like a printed or uh, portrait or whatever, um, whatever you want to call it. We've done this before, and that, that sold. That actually got sold and shipped to Florida about two weeks ago. So. Oh. So yeah, she's my second one. She's big timing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I got these kids to feed and these bills to pay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So throw throw your money at her. Yes. Make it rain. Make yeah, it make rain it for rain. her. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Unless anybody else got something to say. No. No. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I did want to say something to the viewers. I'm heading back to work. And when you guys see this, I'll already be back at work. So the next episode, not this one, this one will come out. What the hell day is that? I don't know. <laughs> What's today? Well, you're watching it, so <laughs> it's already out. The 6th, right? <laughs> so you're watching this on the day it comes out. Yeah, you're, you're watching us on the day that it came out, <laughs> and the next one will be April 27th. So <laughs> talk to you guys later. Like always, subscribe, comment, like, and tag your friends, share it, whatever you got to do. Peace out. Bye.